Hello everyone, Amod here from the Target Common YouTube channel. In this video tutorial, we will use Selenium WebDriver to mock response of API which is called during a functional flow on UI. Let's understand the scenario first. I have a user registration page and when we pass name, email address and password, then click on register, it shows user registered successfully. So at the back end, an API is called upon clicking on register button and whatever response is given by that API, UI may show some different messages or error responses. We can see that API by inspecting this page. Go to network tab and if you click on register button again, you can see one API has been called users which is hosted on localhost and it gives 201 created status code. That's why we see a successful message on UI. If I show you the source code of this register page application, here you can find I am calling this API by passing the body whatever we enter on UI like name, email and password. Then I am checking the response. If response is OK, then I am checking the status code. If it is 201, then it prints user registered successfully. Otherwise, it will show error like something went wrong, please try again. If the response is not ok, then it will go to else if and then it checks for the different stated codes. If the status code is 404, then I am going to show message like resource not found. Similarly, if the response status is 500, then I will show internal server error, please try again later. And when no condition is satisfied, then it will go to else part and it will print unexpected response. Please try again. If we do functional testing of this API independently, then we could easily produce these response codes and verify the expected response message. We can use Wiremock or any proxy server for that. Let's see an approach which I have seen the most. So generally, we introduce some headers like if you want that your API should give 400 status code, then we can create one header like uh, error 400. And when we pass this header as part of X request ID with your API, then it's going to return you 400 status code. Similarly, we can create different headers for other status codes. This is very helpful when you don't want to do end-to-end -end testing, but only focusing on functional part of your API. In this diagram, you can see when the client sends the API request, then it is going to hit a proxy server. This might be your Wiremock server as well. And this proxy server will do the header check. And if you have passed any mock header with your request, then it is going to serve the response from stubs. Otherwise, it will go to actual API server and serve the request as it will do in real time. But when this API is integrated with UI, then it becomes little challenging because we don't have any direct way to pass mock headers with your API request. But we can intercept those API calls using Selenium WebDriver. So basically, when you are performing any action on your application in a browser, then it will trigger the API in the backend. Then we need to intercept that API call. So now I have two approaches here. We can intercept the API call and add headers to the request so that it will go via proxy server. And after that, it will have the same flow whatever I shown you in the first image. Another approach we have after intercepting the API call, we can directly put the expected response and return instead of diverting that API call to proxy server. Both we can do. But if your application has Wiremock setup, then first approach will be good where you are going to add headers to your API call so that it will be served by your proxy server. In this video, I am going to cover second part where after intercepting the API call, I am going to put the mock response. Let's see how can we achieve that. As we already know from previous videos that Selenium WebDriver supports only Chrome DevTools protocol. So whatever we are going to do that is possible only in Chrome browser as of now. So we have one domain called fetch. This fetch domain will allow 
client to substitute browser's network layer with client code. In short, we can intercept the API calls and then put our data there. If you click on this fetch domain, we have some methods, events and types. So the first thing we need to do is enabling this domain. So we need to call fetch.enable. It says it enables issuing of request post events. That means whatever API is triggered, that will be paused. And that request will not be active until we call any of these methods. Here we have one event called request paused. Click on that. It says the request is paused until the client responds with one of the continue request, fail request or fulfill request. So for this event, we need to add our logic to manipulate the response. Let's jump to IntelliJ and write some code. So I have already created a basic script where I'm loading the web page and filling out the details. I have deployed my HTML page and API on local server so that I should not get any cross origin errors. So first step to get the dev tool object. So for that, I need to use Chrome driver dot get dev tools. It is going to return me a type of dev tools, which I can store into a variable dev tools itself. Then I need to create the system. This is very common if you want to use any dev tools protocol in your program. After this, I need to enable fish domain. So to send any command, I need to use dev tools dot send method and domain is fish and I need to pass method enable. This method takes three parameters and all are optional. So I'm going to put optional dot empty for all. So after enabling this fetch, it will issue request post events. So I need to use listeners here. So call dev tools dot add listener. So listener name is fetch dot request post and consumer will be request post. So let me give any variable name. So let's use request post itself with lambda expression. We can access some methods like request post dot get request. It is going to return me a type request. And if you want to fetch the URL, you can do get URL. So in real time, there might be many APIs which can be called and everything will be paused. But I don't want to mock response for all APIs. So obviously we need to put some filter here. So I know that my endpoint contains users and it is a post call. So I'm going to put a check using these parameters. So maybe I can use if condition URL contains slash users and request dot get method equals ignore case post. Then only I want mock the response. So suppose here I want to check for 404 status code. So we can call fetch dot fulfill request because I want to modify the response. So the first parameter is request ID, which is important because request ID is the key between your request and response. This I have already explained in my previous videos. So we can call request pause dot get request ID. Second parameter is response code. I want to use 404 and for remaining, I'm going to pass empty. And since this is a method, so I need to use dev tools dot send. So basically request will be paused and here I'm checking if URL contains users and it is a post call, then return 404 response code for this request ID. If my if condition not satisfied, then, then I will let the request continue with the in normal way. So here again, I can use dev tools dot send since I don't want to mock any response. So I'm going to use fetch dot continue request. Let's pass the request ID. So request pause dot get request ID and other parameters I can pass empty. Let's run this program and see what happens. If API throws 404, then I should see this message like resource not found. Please try again later. So run the program and see whether it happens or not. So you can see resource not found error it is showing. Let's see what other status code we can mock. Let's try for 500. So I will go to this code and instead of 404, I can put 500 and let's run the program. So you can see it is showing you internal server error. So I hope this is helpful. And if you have any doubt, please comment on this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and 
share with others. Thank you, everyone.